is all powers, all might, all dominion. Notice as it says, every name that is named. So there are names right now across the globe that are being named. There are things going across Tenoys, BBC News, ITV News. There's things that we are naming, there's things that doctors are naming, there's things that we are claiming ourselves. But we need to realize the Bible says it is what? What does it say? Every name that is named, we're above that in Christ. Amen. 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 That doesn't mean that there isn't names, but it means you're above every name in Christ. Yes. You see, the paradox on that dynamic is that there are things that can be, we, we, every day of our lives, I guess we name things, don't we? There's always things coming out of our mouths. Of, I mean, next tornado that comes will be name something. It'll be another lady's name, though, I'm sure it will. <laughs> have you noticed that 90% of tornadoes seem to be named after ladies? Uh, sorry, I, sorry, I don't want to cause any aggravation in the ladies. We did have an Ian, though. We've got an Ian in our congregation as a family of the church. So we have had one called Ian. And it was, was there a storm Dennis at one point as well, mm. wasn't there? Mm. Um, sounds about right for Dennis the Menace, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> Have you noticed there'll be many named Denver or Mario? We're, you know, we're in the we're in the King's Quarter, amen. Um, but isn't it interesting that whatever the world names things as, we know in the authority of Christ and being in Christ that we're actually above those names. Are you with me this morning? So as we've been decreeing this morning, we've been praying, pr kind of pl praying as we've been worshiping this morning. We take a hold, don't we? That whatever things and prognosis, whatever things have been spoken against us, whatever ailments or sicknesses that this world may say that we have, we know that that name has to bow under the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We walk in faith and not fear. We walk in victory. Yeah. And we're not victims, are we? Sometimes we have a victim mentality. And it's easy to do that. I, I, for number one, can sometimes fall into that category. But yet we need to realise that we are coming from a place of victory. Amen. As Denise said on Tuesday, on Wednesday, we did talk uh, in our Bible study on, on uh, Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. We did talk about having a hold of our inheritance and um, being able to walk in our inheritance. Not only when we get to eternal life, not only when we die, but right here, right now, we have a right to our inheritance. In the natural world, uh, a will is what they do. And when somebody dies, that will is generally kind of, um, you know, quartered out or passed around in family members and various things. Um, and it's usually for you to gain when somebody's died. But how many of you know that we gain it because Jesus Christ did die, yes. but he rose again and he's victorious. He took the hells of death, the keys of death, hell and Hades, and the grave. And then we get to be partakers of his divine nature. And so this morning, each one of us, we can take healing on board. Uh, we can take Jehovah Rapha on board. We can take Shalom on board. Even Jehovah sneaking from time to time. You can take him on board as well when he sneaks up on you with a blessing. It's interesting when he sneaks up on us and he convicts us, we don't want to shout about it. But as soon as he wants to bless us with something and he sneaks up on us, we want to shout about it, don't we? But I mean, you know, sometimes he, he gives you a bit of a sneak up and he nudges at something you, you're not doing quite right, or maybe a bad attitude or wrong thought. And sometimes we, we like to hide away from those, don't we? But actually when he blesses us with, you know, kind of some kind of healing or supernatural blessing or finances or a better job or a better house or, you know, kind of some kind of deliverance, we shout it from the rooftop. But how do you know that he blesses us in every situation and every circumstance? Amen. 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 So I want to encourage you with that this morning. That's not what I was going to talk about. Uh, I want us to go to Mark chapter 2 uh, this morning. And uh, it's something I really felt that God wants to bring today to us. Mark chapter 2. And if you remember last week, we talked about God's thoughts and not our thoughts from Isaiah 55. And uh, we probably will go back there again, maybe on Sunday, and talk about uh, His ways and not our ways. Nor are our ways His ways. Um, but just the way this week has gone and how Wednesday night went, uh, we had an open space kind of leadership kind of forum on Wednesday evening. And uh, we had Ken Gott with us. And there's some prophetic things that God is speaking about uh, over us as a church, but in this region as well. God is stirring up things. And, uh, there were some things that he touched on about presence, about transformation. And there's some things that God has really been speaking to me about. And I wasn't sure when to bring this to us as a church. But uh, I kind of felt on Wednesday evening there's a real confirmation to bring this to us. And uh, kind of the way the atmosphere uh, has been this morning, I think it's right for us to go here as well. Mark chapter 2, uh, verse 1 to 12. It says, Again he entered Capernaum after some days. And it was heard a noise abroad that Jesus was in the house. Now, uh, obviously we understand this was Jesus walking with the disciples. 
Um, this was when he was in Jerusalem, Samaria, Capernaum, different areas, and his disciples, disciples. And it's interesting, it says, and again, he entered Capernaum. This wasn't the first time that Jesus had been to Capernaum. It might not have been the first time he'd been to this person's house. Um, there's not very, very uh, kind of many places that Jesus visited a number of times, but this was one of them. And it says, it was heard at noise abroad that Jesus was in the house. And it says, verse 2, immediately many gathered together so that there was no room to receive them, uh, not even near the door. And they preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. So, um, you know, this was interesting. This guy was paralyzed. There was some kind of issue in his life. And he wasn't able to get in the house, wasn't even able to get near the windows. Um, but he was carried there by four men. And when they could not come near to him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed which the paralytic was lying on. Verse 5 of Mark chapter 2. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Now that's a real boost of encouragement, that isn't it? Uh, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes that were sitting there reasoned in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit. You see, Jesus didn't hear them saying this, but he perceived it in their spirit. You see, it's important that we have discernment in the days that we're living in. Even when you go into other people's houses, even when you're involved with other people, situations and circumstances, church, it is massively important that we understand the spirit of the situation that is going on in the atmosphere and also that we perceive what this negative or what the positive or what the situation is that's going on. And it's interesting that he says he immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? <clears throat> you see, many of us have got reasoning going on in our hearts. We've got tug of war going on in our hearts. And I've got news for you. The counsellor can't help you with that. Psychosis can't help you with it. The tablets can't help you with it. A doctor can't help you with it. But Jesus, the great physician, he's the one that can help me with my heart. Amen. He can help you with your heart. Amen. There are things and situations and circumstances that God is perceiving about us that maybe we don't perceive about ourselves and maybe others can't perceive about us as well. Sometimes no matter how much you go to these places and they're great places to go and um, counsel and various things and have good friends and relationships, sometimes you just can't relay your heart to them and they sometimes just can't help your heart or heal your heart. But how many of you know that Jesus, the great physician, amen. he's the one that perceives all of our hearts this morning. Amen. 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 amen? amen. Which is easier, this is Jesus talking, verse 9 of Mark chapter 2, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? Don't you love these questions that Jesus asked? He's got a question about that. Verse 10. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. You see, here's the thing. I don't know about you. and uh, But I'm sure many people that have died paralyzed, but yet have had millions of pounds or thousands of pounds. Maybe they felt about all the ducks in a row. Maybe they felt that every answer to their questions have been answered. But yet they've died, but yet they've not had forgiveness of sins. They've died, but they've not had eternal life. They've died, but they've not had their eternal reward. They may have had a natural reward. The reason they become a millionaire might be because they've had some great, you know, heritage along the lines that, and land have been sold and houses have been sold and no longer have a mortgage and no longer have to pay anything on the car. All the, everything is unkidori. They might have it all in this present world, but yet they might have never been able to receive healing. They might have never been able to receive an answer to their hurts or their wounds or their incurable, maybe trauma in their life. But yet all it takes is the F word, not the one that the world uses, but the F word of forgiveness. Because how many of you know, sometimes we need forgiveness in order to receive our eternal salvation, our eternal reward, 
Sometimes we need forgiveness as well to walk in healing. Yeah. Sometimes we need to re- actually ourselves forgive others. Mm. Um, you know, there's a saying, it says that, you know, if, if we choose not to forgive, it's sometimes like drinking poison ourselves and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. The Bible says that if we don't forgive, our own Heavenly Father cannot forgive us. I'll repeat that again, it's very worth repeating. This morning, the Bible says, Denver Thompson, now talk to me, if I cannot forgive those that have hurt me or wounded me, or whatever has gone on in my personal life, then God, the Holy Spirit, the Father, who loves me as his son, cannot forgive me. And sometimes that can be our ceiling, can be our roof, it can be our blockage to our Father truly being able to love us as his son, and us as a son having a real relationship with God the Father. You see, if we don't forgive, we can many times, what we can do is we can still have the attributes of God, we can still have the favor of God, we can still have God in our lives moving amongst us, but maybe we won't have the true relationship of a father to a son or a son to a father. And it's interesting here, he said, look, it's easier for me to forgive And it's better for you to be forgiven than it actually is for you to be fully healed. Because how many of you know that forgiveness can really eat away at us and can really cause us to be offset in our journey of life. And so verse 10, but you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic. And verse 11, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We not, never saw anything like this. They were astonished. They've not seen anything like this. Now, does that not remind you about the woman at the well when she says, I've met a man? <laughs> she didn't have Twitter, she didn't have Facebook, she didn't have Instagram, she didn't have a mobile phone, she didn't have BT cell net. Uh, she didn't have Wi-Fi, um, you know, they didn't have jet planes, they didn't have cars, they didn't have automobiles like we have today where you can get information from one place to another. Um, she didn't even have a typewriter, anything like that. It was just word of mouth. But yet he says, look, I'm astonished, I'm amazed that God has turned up in my presence today. Now I've got a few questions for us. What is your ceiling or what is your roof that is causing you to walk in limitation Today, and uh, this might be quite a strong message, but I believe it's a message directly from God to all of us, I include myself. So what is our ceiling? What is our roof that has become a seal or a limitation or a struggle on us getting to God on the journey of life? You see, it's interesting that this paralytic man naturally couldn't walk there. Naturally, he had no way of phoning a taxi. He had no way of doing a 50-50 for a friend. Uh, naturally, he had no way of getting there. There was no number 66 bus that was on his journey. There was no train to get him there. Uh, we understand there was probably some donkeys, don't we? There were some horses. I'm sure they could have stuck him on a sheep or something to maybe get him there. But there was no way for him physically to get to this house where Jesus was. What is the limitations? What is it that we allow ourselves when we do have hurts and wounds, when we do have a need of healing, what is it that limits us and what is it that seals our ceiling on our approach and getting to Jesus? What are the limitations of us as a church reaching our full potential? What is the limitations on our life for us getting to Jesus right where he's at, allowing Jesus into our space? So notice the paralyzed man had an obstacle to overcome. He had to get into the house to be healed. To get his needs met, he had to get into that house. Now, it's interesting with the houses back in the day, back then, because they weren't like they are today. They were a bit more like a bungalow. Everything was on one level. Back then, in a bungalow nowadays, you've got probably several different rooms. You've got maybe two or three different um, bedrooms. You've got maybe a couple of toilets. You've maybe got a conservatory. Maybe you've got a living room, a dining room. Depends on the size of the premises. Now, a lot of houses nowadays are built as called townhouses, about four or five different floors to them. That wasn't the case back then. 
Um, also, nowadays, you can see with the roof, you've got felt, you've got tiles, you've got wood. Um, you know, it would be a little bit more difficult maybe to get in through a roof nowadays than it was back then. It was more hay, straw, a bit of mud to throw together. And the roofs were more flat roofs. They weren't tend to be kind of like they are um, triangular, but they were more flat roofs back then. And um, basically what they would do is they would make a little bit of a walkway up to the roof sometimes. But it's interesting that this roof didn't have a walkway up to the roof. Now why do we know there were walkways up to the roof? David and Bathsheba, right? Because she bathed on the roof. So there was obviously a way she could have got up there. So we know, don't we, that some houses, maybe these guys are a bit more poorer. Maybe they didn't have access to be able to put in a staircase up to the roof. So there was obviously maybe no access to this roof. But there was a seal, there was a ceiling on the house. The other way they could have got was through the door, or they could have got through the windows. But it's clear they couldn't even get to the door or the windows. Goodness me, how would they even get to the roof, Penny? Because there was no access. But you notice this, that what they did is they peeled the roof back, they opened up the roof. Now how many of you know that if we rip this roof off, let's say there's 200 of us in here when George and Banoff come, can't open the windows. Um, so if somebody says, well, we're just going to rip the roof off. And all of a sudden we rip the roof off. How many of you know that we have a tenancy agreement on this? And so somebody's not going to be quite happy. I know Pat won't be happy, I won't be happy, it's just these, but, but yet, how many of you know that if all of a sudden the paralytic man was released or one was brought down in here and instantly healed, how many of you know you're not going to be bothered about a hole in your roof? Come on. Because it'd be nice to brought that Jesus was in the house. Okay. Now, not to get in neon lights, it's not to be on God TV, but to allow that man or that woman to be healed and set free. Yeah. Sometimes we've got to remove the limitations of our life. Come on, Come on church, individuals. We've got to open the door and allow the past to go. Yeah. Sometimes we've got to rip the roof off our seal of, yeah. I've made it, I'm here, I've got it, I'm anointed, I'm called, Come I'm on. purposed by a God, it's called me for such, that's great. Yeah. But if you're not able to get past today into tomorrow and you're trapped in your own inhibitions of ego and pride and Holy Spirit selfishness, then how many of you know you've hit a ceiling? And many of us in the church are crippled and paralyzed, maybe not physically, but maybe emotionally and spiritually, because we're not allowing ourselves to rip open. Come on. Because we're not allowing ourselves to open our mindset and our walk on our yeah. spirit with God. And we're allowing our limitations to limit us. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, this paralyzed man, we don't really understand how paralyzed he was, but it describes him as paralyzed, meaning he was paralyzed, couldn't walk, couldn't talk. We don't know if he had no arms, we don't know if if he had no eyes, we're not quite sure about his healing, but we do certainly know that maybe there was a creative miracle that happened in that place that day. Come on. If Ford will make you part for a Ford one day or a BMW, that is a creative being. How many of you know that you are created today and God can make new parts for you today? How many of you know that He can renew your organs in your body? Absolutely. God, can, God is a creative miracle working God. Amen. You know, I've seen eyes in, 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 uh, when I was over there in, in Africa, in Sierra Leone, eyeballs grow, eyeballs open up, and deaf ears open, uh, and various things. I've, I've seen different things and heard many stories over the years, even in the United Kingdom, yeah. that God has done. Yeah. Because he's a creative God. Amen. He's a miracle working God. Absolutely. But yet we can limit our life. We can be the one that actually paralyzes yeah. our view of Jesus. Yes. We can paralyze our view of Jesus. I tell you what, if this doesn't excite you, your wood is wet. Dry your wood out for a few months and let's relight it. Amen? Because this should really encourage you this morning. We're going somewhere as a church and God is leading us on this journey. Yes, now you know God wants to bring paralyzed people into this house. Lord, but how many of you know, as they say, not every disability is noticeable. No, that's so true. Not every disability is noticeable. And I don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not undermining disability. But there are traumas that we all go through. As pastors, you go through traumas. There's things that come against you, balls out of left field. You don't know what they are, but they might catch up with you a few years later, when at the moment in time you didn't realize the emotion, you didn't realize the impact of the situation around you, but eventually it comes to you. Yes. And so there are times where we need to realize what is paralyzing us. Mm. Is it pride? Is it arrogance? Is it unwillingness to learn? Is it sometimes the fact that we are shy? You might not think I'm shy, but I am shy. You might not think I'm an introvert, but I am an introvert. I'll speak when spoken to, um, and I'll preach if I need to preach and leave the church if I need to, and that's what God's calling. But outside of that, I'm not trying to fit into the crowd to be honest with you. Have a coffee with you, hang out with you, that's no issue in that way. But other than that, I'm quite shy if you like. So sometimes our shyness 
Maybe a shyness of not knowing a portion of scripture or not really having the confidence to read scripture. Maybe we struggle in the aspect of being able to pray openly and out loud. These are things at times that can paralyze me. I've been on all that journey. Trust me, I have been on all that journey. And even now, like we sit around these tables on, on Wednesday morning sometimes, I'm sat there thinking, I'm inadequate. I don't have enough to give me. I don't have all the answers. That's not what it's about. But sometimes I sit there thinking, goodness me, I feel like a, a bump on a log here. Because sometimes you just don't have the answer. Sometimes you, you feel out of it. Sometimes you don't feel that you can relate to it. Or sometimes God convicts you. You feel even more like a bump on a log thinking, oh, God, you're speaking to me. And I've got another 12 people sat around me this morning. <laughs> sometimes I feel like my face is like bright red. You know, red nose is coming soon. But um, hopefully I'm not going to be too bright with the nose. But then there's, there's other aspects of envy or unforgiveness or jealousy sometimes that can be obstacles that paralyze us. It's interesting that Jesus was in the house, but the man was outside, unable to look in at what Jesus was doing. He did not know what Jesus was doing in that house. Jesus might have been having a, a Nando's, he might have been having a curry like, you know, kind of, um, Carol was teasing me about this morning, she'd been out for a wonderful curry last night. She's a third person, there two other people last night sent me pictures of curry. And uh, it's really good, I sent a message to Mark on Thursday tea time. I was like, man, I'm really craving a curry. You know what you get those cravings for a certain kind of palette of food? So that four times this week, somebody's really teased me. So please, God, because obviously telling me about buffet in my body, isn't it? Um, I, without a receipt, it's not a good food to eat, but I'm not sure what he's saying. But here's the thing, it's interesting, isn't it, that he didn't know what he was doing on the inside. But he didn't allow the aspect of not knowing to be his ignorance to get into Christ. How many of us, if we're honest, when we don't know what's inside the package or inside the house or inside the church, and much rather not knowing, because mm -hmm. we like to be in control. Yes. We like to know exactly what's going to happen. When I come to church on Sunday, I, I want to know that we're going to start at half ten, there's going to be two hymns, two words, three points and a poem. And hopefully if there's some nice chocolate biscuits and a nice latte, and hopefully that Denver Thompson's not going to speak too long. Yeah. Hopefully the worship, they're not going to do the songs too long. Yeah. Hopefully I'm out by five to twelve so that I can get all from my roast beef and Yorkshire pudding yeah. by half past twelve. So that I can watch my football at 3 o'clock and as long as I'm in my recliner and as long as I can watch the football at 3 o'clock, I'm happy and content. Yeah. Yeah. Because let's be, we're creatures of habit, aren't we? True. As much as we call ourselves the wonderful charismatic free zoo, or uh, individual church, sorry, as much as we believe we're free, many times we're quite bound. Yes. Let's be honest, we're quite bound. And, I believe in being kind of, you know, punctual and making sure that we abide, you know, make sure that we don't just tarry for the sake of tarrying and understand that people's backsides can only sit on these chairs for so long. Um, I understand that, but I also understand we have responsibilities and we have things that we have to, you know, if people are going swimming or people have got work, we have to adhere to that, so I understand that. So don't hear what I'm not saying. What I'm saying is we are creatures of habit and creatures of being control of what we view, what we see, what we hear, and what we say. But this guy had no control. No. He had to get where Jesus was, amen? He had to get where Jesus was. Number one, do we sometimes let obstacles get in the way from our entry into the presence of Jesus? Number one, do we sometimes let obstacles get in the way from us, me, you, individually, corporately, entering in to the presence of Jesus Christ. Do we ourselves allow obstacles to not get to the presence of Jesus? Number two, maybe sometimes we allow the problem to get in our way from getting to where Jesus is. Maybe we allow the problem to get in our way to become a blockage to paralyze us, to become a stumbling block, to get to where Jesus is. You see, I believe today, each one of us as a church, that we have a choice to make up our minds. That we will allow our house to be a place where God dwells. Now what do I mean by our house? I don't just mean the house that you physically live in. And I believe this here is a house of God today. We know it's not the building, so we don't idolize the building. We believe in excellency in the building. 
want to do the best to upkeep the building. It's a great vehicle. As we know in England, we get a lot of rain and a lot of wind and storms from time to time. So it's a great vehicle. Wonderful um, British gas that's pumping through. It's not British and imported now, but we've got some wonderful gas. Wonderful electricity that we're able to see through the winter times as we go through the year. But I don't even know that's a vehicle to allow us to gather together and meet God as individuals or corporately. And I'm not just talking about the house you live in, Jill, or the house that I live in. I'm talking about this physical house. Because I don't even know that God's more important and more interested in this physical house that we carry. Now, there's people in this auditorium from different cultures today. And so houses look very different in our land, in our nations. Every one of us this morning look very different. We're very unique. God has made us peculiar, unique men and women of God, but we've been grafted into his family. Amen. And he calls us his children. Yeah. But he also says he's just uh, to, to come and live in us and to settle his abode in us. Yes. And it says that the near us, which is the tabernacle of God, the N-E-R-O-S, that has come to live in us, and so we have a soma, this flesh. The Bible says, from dust you've come, to dust you shall return. The flesh is called the soma, S-O-M-A. And it says that you have now become the naos of God, the very inner holy of holies. So you actually, individually, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have repented of your sins, if he's on the throne of your heart, if you've been washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, if you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, then today I've got news for you that Christ is living in you and you are living in Christ. Amen. That's why the Bible says this out of body may perish. Yeah. But praise God, we're not looking for the undertaker, we're looking for the uppertaker. Amen. Amen. Amen in Christ. Amen. And so this out of body may perish. We may get freckles, we may have a big nose, we may have ginger hair. Uh, when we eat curry, our body sometimes may grow and expand away from us, but it's debt free. Amen? And it does, it, it does encourage us to expand the kingdom. But how many know it's important that we don't limit God through our own flesh? That's why the Bible says it's important to have clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. Because God can tell when our hands aren't clean, and He can tell when our hearts are impure. Yes. Others might not be able to tell, but God can surely tell. Yes. Because He perceives. Us individually. You know why? Because when you accept him as Lord and Saviour, man, he's in there with skin on. Yeah. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, they come to live in you with skin yeah. on. Yeah. So everywhere you go, you are a representation of God upon the earth. Every time you come in a ladder to play somebody's window, I mean, you know, man, you are God with skin on. Yeah. You're not just doing a mundane job every single day of the week. No, you are purposely designed by God. To be God in that community you go in. You can pray over every household, every window you touch, you can say, salvation, healing, miracles, yes. simple. Yes. I mean, they might lock you up for talking to yourself, but <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll come and get you out. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, even at that desk you're sitting every single day, mm -hmm. in that house, in that community that God has called you to, wherever you are, you can be God with skin on, you can be influential. Amen. Don't allow limitations. You know, I won't mention Samantha again, she's a wonderful uh, driving instructor by the way, I'm always tagging her on Facebook and all sorts of different things. Um, and, um, but you know, every time somebody comes and sits at the side of you, they say, you are there, Samantha, with skin on. Yes. Might just be for a season, but it's just interesting, isn't it? That you are God with skin on. Stop looking at your freckles. You know, stop looking at the idiosyncrasies or stop looking at the, the, the limitations that we do ourselves and we look in the mirror and I've got a bit of dry skin. Man, my hair looks a mess today, doesn't it? You know, I really need to, to, to put a bit of Botox in there just to spur myself up a little bit. Stop looking at the flesh. Look at the God of all flesh that lives in you. And be encouraged. Don't allow it to limit you. And so number one, it's interesting. Because we've been talking about presence recently, and I know that he's touched on that. And, and I know that on Wednesday evening, Ken spoke about presence, and Ken and Stuart did a real outpouring uh, in the early 90s, and all the way through his life, he's it, it, been around many women of God, like John and Carol Anna, and many of us, and George and Banner that will be with us on Sunday evening this week, that have seen mighty signs and wonders, and have seen God really move. But number one, it's interesting, this is the place of his presence. You see, this house was a place of God's presence. Amen. You see, I want to encourage you to get past your limitations and get to the place of God's presence. 
Not to the presence of your wife or your husband or your children. Not to the presence of a, a friend or an influential person. That's all well and good. Don't heal what I'm not seeing. But it's important that we get into the presence of God. It's important we get to the presence of God. Number two, it was a place where others were welcomed. You see, you notice that people were welcomed into this house. We've got to make sure as a house of God and individuals, what we carry, that we're a welcoming body, that we're a welcoming people, that we welcome people sometimes into our lives. It might be inconvenient to go for a coffee with that person, but I mean, you know, it might just be life-saving to pull down the limitations yeah. and pull the seal off their roof. Amen. You just never know. Amen. And so number two, there was a, a place of welcome. Number three, it's interesting because he said that he preached the word. <laughs> That's interesting nowadays, isn't it? Many times people are topical or topical preachers. Many churches you go to today, they don't even preach the Word of God. Uh, many times people don't even bring a Bible to the pulpit. How can they learn to quote the Scripture? I mean, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? You know, if Mario all of a sudden turns up at work and doesn't have a pen, you know, and he's able to write anything down and doesn't have a calculator and doesn't have a computer and just sits there all day at the desk and waits for them to supply it for him. How many of you know the certainty is going to supply itself? You know what I mean? You know, when, when Brian goes into Sainsbury's and he's checking, doing some stock check and checking the prices, and it's, it, you know, it's no point in just waiting there and going, well, there's no thought for to be stocked up. He's got to get access to the beans and put the beans on the shelf. There's a process to the promise. And so it's interesting that you've got to know and you've got to preach the word. Because it's a tool. You know how many of you know this is the basic instruction before leaving earth is this. This is a tool that you can use against the enemy. When you're lethargic, you can use this. When you need healing, you can use this. When you need interpretation, you can use this. When you need guidance, you can use this. When you need encouragement, you can use this. Amen. When you need to march around your Jericho walls, yes. you can use this. Amen. When you need to pull the ceiling off your limitations, you can use this word. Amen. This word you can take to the bank. In fact, it's better than taking to the bank. Because you get better interest on it. They won't fall close on you. Praise God. Number three, a place to show love, a place to show hope, and a place to show life. Notice there was a place that was showing love. Obviously this house had love. The paralytic man wanted to get there because there was love. There was also a hope. You see, when you come to Jesus, you come to hope. Yeah. The man hope. It's an unshakable hope. It's a joy-filled hope. It's a rejoicing hope. Yeah. But also there's life. Yeah. You see, this paralyzed man, he had no life. He was ill. We don't know what was going on. There was all manner of things. He couldn't earn a living. Maybe he could pay his bills. Maybe he'd been spat and discarded by all men who used to place them on the outside of the city. Generally, people that were begging. Mm. And he was known as a nobody, placed on the outside. But I've got news for you, that nobody became a somebody in the presence of God. Mm. And it's not a cheesy cliche, but you sometimes, we can feel like a nobody. We can feel overlooked, we can feel overshadowed by our circumstances and our situations. Even in church sometimes, as a church sometimes, we can feel, well, what's that church? Who's that church? Who's that individual? But God wants to make you a somebody because he wants to give life Amen. in your mortal body. Yes. Jesus has come that we would have life and life more abundant. Are you with me? But notice number four, it was a place of transformation. Because this man, his life was fully transformed. Yes. Come on, it affected his family. It affected the community. Absolutely. It affected every man, woman, boy and girl that Andrew that ever looked at him. It affected them. Mm -hmm. You see, the kingdom of God is a factual kingdom. Yeah. It affects people, or it should do. Is it just me that's getting excited this morning? No, 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 no. You know, you can be affected. Where you are, you can be affected. Every illness, every sickness that we go through, Christine, we can still be affected. Yes. Because we have a choice. Do we allow what we're going through to limit us, to paralyze us? Mm. Do we allow it to seal us into no, a container no, where we say, so far enough, oh, it's a brass, brass roof, it's a brass ceiling. No, it's not that way. Because if, you, if you're in love with Christ and Christ is in your relationship, there's no brass ceiling to a relationship. Amen. Amen. He can reach to you. Yes. You can reach to him. Hallelujah. And so there's a place of transformation He was transformed. Do we need to pull the ceiling or the roof of our limitations and restrictions? Maybe our fears, our worries, our doubts. Maybe past. Maybe past hurts. Maybe past traumas 
maybe past wounds, yeah. maybe lies that we've spoken over ourselves, maybe lies that we believe, maybe lies that we say to others, or maybe lies that have become an obstacle to us. Mm. Because I mean, you know, the devil is a liar. Yes. You have a future. You have a hope. Amen. You have a destiny. You've got Amen. a purpose. Amen. You've got a father that loves you, but the enemy will tell you you don't. Yeah. But I've come to tell you this morning, the enemy is the father of all lies. Yes. And God is the father of truth. Hallelujah. There is no turning in the kingdom of God. Amen. He's not a shapeshifter, is it God? If he says he's going to be a son, he's a son. If he's going to be a comforter, he's going to be a comforter. If he's a counselor, he's going to be a counselor. If he's going to be the prince of peace, he's going to be the prince of peace. Amen. He ain't got that with Lucifer. No. He's a shapeshifter. He's a divider. He's a liar. He's a cheater. He's a stealer. Are you with me? What do we say about our circumstances? What do we say over our economy, over our town? What do we say over our community? Come on. What do we say Come over on. our nation? Come on. Because we are a remnant. There might not be thousands of us this morning in this auditorium, but there's many of us here. And we can influence our community. Yes. We can influence the economy. We can influence the gap, the council, the government. We can influence our very nation. Yes. All it takes is one man, one woman, that will stand out from the crowd, that will yes. worship when nobody else will worship. They will pray when nobody else will pray. Yes. They will come to church when your friend doesn't want to come. They will read the Bible when nobody else will read the Bible. Yes. When everybody else is forsaken, they're gathering together. As some have, as it says in Hebrews 12, 10. He says, some of you have forsaken, they're gathering together. And we know we still got to gather, even if others forsake, they're gathering together. Are you with me yes. this morning? You see, what is our canopy that we're living under? Come is on. the canopy of doubt? Is it unbelief? Is it defeat? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it the illness that somebody's spoken about us? Is it our own lives? Is it deceptiveness? Is it deceit? Is it a lack of honesty? Because I've got news for you. I might not see it. Others might not see it. You might not see it. But God can see it. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. The Bible says his eye is on the sparrow. If his eye is on the sparrow, then his eye is on you. If his eye is on the sparrow, his eye is on Denver Thompson. And we should have the fear of God in our lives. So we're not perfect. We might fall. We might slide. We might trip up from time to time. We're all human beings. But how many of you know that eye is on us? Yes, praise And so God wants to encourage us with that. If we'll just get to Jesus, if we can just get to Jesus, then he can work your miracle in your life. Yes. If we can just get to Jesus, Amen. then he can work the miracle in your life and yes, in my Lord. life. Yes, Lord. If we will just do our best, yes. God will take care of the rest. Yes. 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 I said if we will just do our best, God will take care of the rest. Amen. Just brothers and sisters this morning, leave it to God. Yes. If you will do your best, God will take care of the rest. If you will just reach out to God today, Thank He will put Jesus. the broken pieces of your life and my life to and our life back together Thank again. Jesus. I'll say that again. If you will just reach out Glory to Jesus, to He will put the broken pieces of your life and my life and our life back Thank together Lord. again. Hallelujah. Some of us are just in bewilderment. Jesus. Some of us are daydreamers. Yeah. Some of us just want the past and the present. Yeah. I've got news for you. You need to cut the umbilical cord to the past because yeah. you're not going to grow forward. That person's not going to walk back in the room again. That person's not going to speak to you again. They're not one relationship with you. So if they don't want relationship with you, stop trying to pursue the relationship with them. I've got news for you. The day you received Jesus Christ, you became a new creation. Amen. All things were passed away. I've been born again. Amen. I'm a new creation. Hallelujah. I'm a brand new man. Hallelujah. You're a brand new woman today. Yes. Let's do a song for you, Brian. Yes. I'm a new creation. Forget about what the enemy did yesterday. Shut the door on the past. Come on. Put the umbilical cord. Glory. Otherwise, you're not going to live. You're not going to thrive. Mm. You're not going to grow. Are you with me this morning? If you'll just press in to his presence, then you will see transformation in your life. If you'll just press into his presence, if you'll just reach into his presence, yes. if you'll just go beyond yourself for a few minutes, yes, you, then I guarantee you'll see transformation. You, Jesus. I've seen it many times. Yes. I've been discouraged many times. I've cried many times for other people. I've seen other people that have gone to the enemy and back. I've seen other people that have been killed by and destroyed by the enemy because he's a serial killer. Yes. But I've got news for you. That he has you exactly on the forefront of his mind. Mm. He loves you. 
He's interceding for you all the time. And if you can just reach past your dilemma, if you can just reach past your illness, just reach past the trauma, just reach past your mindset to his presence, then he can bring transformation to your mind, to your heart, to your relationship, to your finances. Thank you, Lord. Are you with me this morning? Yes, Lord. If we'll just seek his face today, listen to this, he will forgive us all our sins. Amen. If we'll just seek his face today, Amen. then he will forgive us all of our yes, sins. Praise God. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness. And see, righteousness is the hinge to seeking. Yes. No point seeking if you're living unrighteously. No point seeking if you don't know Jesus. No point seeking if there's secret sin. No point seeking if you're discouraged. No point seeking if your heart is not right in pursuit of God. Because it says seek first the kingdom of God. That's fine. No, it doesn't. You see, there's a hinge to seeking. It says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then the things that God wants for you shall be added unto you. You see, we love the blessings. But sometimes we don't want the, the law act of duty. We don't want the ordinance. We don't want the discipline of living righteously, living honorably, and in the fear of the Lord. Are you with me? This morning, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, I decree and declare wholeness over this auditorium. Every individual person this morning. Lord, I come against sugar diabetes. I come against arthritis. Lord, I pray, Lord, where there's debt, Lord, where there's uh, struggling in, in, uh, mentally, Lord, this morning in, in, in areas of being crippled mentally. Lord, even in the blood flow, this morning, I speak into those areas. Lord, if there's relational issues, Lord, where the enemy is trying to decapitate us, uh, Lord, even in relationships, Lord, with our children, or our grandchildren, or, or our young children, or our teenagers, or our older children. Jesus. Lord, maybe the backslider, we decree and declare, your mind to the backslider. Yes, yes, Lord. That backslider will come to your house, to your presence. Yes, Lord. Lord, we decree and declare wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, every man, woman, boy, and girl this morning, Thank you, Lord, Lord, we pray, Lord, you are moved by your spirit. Yes. That we would rip the ceiling open oh, in our Lord. mindset, in our spiritual oh, dynamics, Lord, in, our, in our areas where we're paralyzed oh, mentally, Lord, spiritually, Jesus. physically. Lord, Lord, I pray this morning that you will bless Lord, us with the oil of the anointing. Lord, that penetrates, oh, holy God, oh, oil oh, penetrates us oh, this morning, oh, mold us oh, and shape us into oh, who you want us to be. Lord, we love you oh, and we thank you that you grace oh, us with your presence. But Lord, let us not get weary in your presence. Lord, let us not get familiar with your presence. But Lord, let us believe that there is love and there is hope and there is life. And that you will transform our community. Yes, Lord. You will transform the government of the United yes. Kingdom. Yes. You will bring revival. You will bring hope. Yes. That where there's mass suicide, there will be yes. life. Where people are self-harming. The Lord, you will bring wholeness. Yes. Lord, where there's death for me. Where there's broken marriages for me. Where there's yes. men and women of trauma and hurts and wounds. Yes. Lord, even in our own community. Yes. Lord, where there's people struggling for food and finances. Yes. The Lord, you will bring transformation yes. to this community. Let it be, Lord. To every individual person in this auditorium this morning. Lord, go into their houses. Bring your yes, presence Lord. into their houses. Lord, where they've sealed you in a container yes. or in a box. Yes, Rip open their yes. box. Yes, Lord. Take away their past. Yes, Take away their hurts. Be a comforter. Be a counselor. Lord, be the Prince yes. of Peace yes, Lord. Yes, in their lives Thank you, Jesus. this morning. Thank you, Lord. Let us not just be hearers, Thank but let us be doers of this word this morning. Yes. Maybe we need to physically write some things down and make a list of things. Amen. Maybe we need to go home and just kind of do an action of ripping open your ceiling and your yes. roof and saying, God, I allow you to have a portal to come in yes. to my house. Right. Maybe rip open your heart before yes. God, your mind, your theology, your, your aspect of do's and don'ts and controls. Put it down and do something physical in that element this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You excited? Yes, amen.